Are aid trucks really not entering the Gaza Strip? Why is Hamas taking revenge on the residents of the Gaza Strip? Is Jordan losing control over the border with Israel? And most importantly, where does the IDF stand in the war against Hamas? I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on day 152 of the war against Hamas. Let's take a moment to look at the war in Gaza from the eyes of the people who live there. They face great uncertainty and are very concerned about the future. It's understandable that they fear displacement and disagree about the future control of the Gaza Strip. Most of them actually prefer Israeli rule in Gaza and are worried about allowing Hamas to continue to rule as if nothing happened. In the meantime, as a result of the chaos caused by the power vacuum left by Hamas, many families in Gaza have established defense committees against other armed elements. These militias are not defending themselves from the IDF. They are defending themselves from Hamas militants and all kinds of other militias in the Gaza Strip. These families want to protect their property and their homes from looting, a threat that is becoming very common in the anarchy created by the war. They are working in close cooperation with the IDF because they want to make sure that the humanitarian aid that reaches Gaza is truly delivered to citizens who need it and not stolen by Hamas or lost in the chaos of riots and looting. Another reason the defense committees are forming is to protect families from persecution by Hamas in the event of a ceasefire. Families are often targeted for suspicion of collaboration with Israel. This is a very dangerous moment for both Israel and the Palestinians, and we ask you once again to join us in prayer for this situation and all those who are in authority who have to make decisions. Pray for safety for those who demand peace. Keep spreading the truth with us. Share our YouTube videos and follow us on social media and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. On that note, I can report to you that yesterday in Gaza, the IDF neutralized a huge Hamas tunnel in the northern Gaza Strip facing Israel. It was first discovered on December 16, 2023. It took the IDF engineers several weeks to fully explore this tunnel, disarm the booby traps Hamas left there, collect all the intelligence materials, weapons, and ammunition Hamas stored in this tunnel. Further south in Khan Yunis, the battle team of the 7th Brigade carried out special and targeted missions in the heart of the built-up area. Following an intelligence lead, the soldiers searched a number of terrorist infrastructures of Hamas and located munitions warehouse as well. It is astonishing how much weapons and ammunition the IDF keeps fighting in the Gaza Strip. It breaks our heart to think about all the money Hamas must have spent to accumulate it all. Money that should have been spent on the welfare of the people of Gaza. This particular warehouse was situated next to a school that served as a shelter for Gazan citizens. In the west of Khan Yunis, another battle team of the 7th Brigade found some of these munitions in UNRWA bags and hiding pits. The terrorists also hide warheads of rockets, cartilages for different kinds of small arms and grenades in the heart of a civilian neighborhood as well. Switching to the eastern border of Israel, we have a peace treaty with Jordan. We share a desire for regional calm and stability. However, Jordan is also a reluctant ally for many reasons, one of which is their majority of Palestinians. But recently, the Islamic Republic of Iran has been working to set up terrorist cells in Jordan so it can threaten Israel from this border just like it has already done in the Gaza Strip and Lebanon. Intense efforts are already underway to thwart this alarming threat. However, 
Iran has some strong advantages. In countries like Afghanistan, where there are few opportunities for young people to find work, Iran recruits young Shiites and takes them to Iraq and Iran to train them to be terrorists. They are then sent to countries bordering Israel in order to carry out terror attacks. The fear is that they will be sent through Iraq into Jordan, which has limited capacity to monitor its border or control all of its territory. Does this sound complicated and long? The frequent reports of Israeli attacks in Syria are often to neutralize these terror cells trying to infiltrate Israel. If the Iranians can't get through these defenses, they'll try another approach. Israelis are very aware of the danger, and this weekend, another edition of my analytical series, My State, will be released, in which I will describe some of the things we're doing to prepare for this threat. Finally, let's turn to the question of questions. Hamas and Al Jazeera are reporting a starvation plot against the Gazans. In Hamas's message page, senior members of the organization, led by its leader, Ismail Ania, are promoting the lie of Israel starving the Gazans. So how much humanitarian aid has actually been sent into Gaza? Let's look at the numbers. The numbers are publicly available. An easy example is to see how many food trucks enter the Gaza Strip. Now, please pay close attention because these are numbers. In the last two weeks, more food trucks entered the Gaza Strip on average per day than on the eve of the outbreak of the war. In those same two weeks, an average of 102 aid trucks entered the Gaza Strip per day, most of them carrying food. This compared to 70 food trucks that entered Gaza on average per day before the start of the war. In other words, this is an increase of about 50% in the amount of food trucks that enter the Gaza Strip every day in recent weeks, compared to the average amount per day before the war. Did you catch that? Gaza receives twice as much food as it did before the war. We could say it's because the local ability to produce food in Gaza has decreased due to the war. But this is a big but. This is the same time that we see documented evidence coming from Gaza in which Hamas militants take over aid trucks that enter Gaza as soon as they pass the gates of the Gaza Strip. They are stealing supplies from the hands of the residents of Gaza and not even trying to hide it. Hamas began peddling this narrative from the beginning of the war. This is how Hamas established the starvation narrative with the help of Al Jazeera in Europe and America. I hope you understand how the terrorist organization Hamas is pushing this false narrative and the traction it's getting, even in the United States. We can see this because the United States government has called on Israel in recent days to open new border crossings into the Gaza Strip in order to bring in more aid to the Palestinians. In a meeting this week between Benny Gantz and Antony Blinken, the US Secretary of State said that Israel must take urgent steps to expand the entry of distribution of humanitarian aid, including by opening additional crossings. This is also during the ongoing ceasefire talks. That is why we have the duty to spread the truth. We need to be the ones who begin to break the lies and evil of Hamas. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. Every day, through the support of partners like you, TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.